Hi, I'm Chief Monica Hallman. Join Staff Sergeant Jimmy Williams and me on Navy Marine Corps News. This week, the Navy welcomes its newest Chief Petty Officers in ceremonies held around the fleet. Check out how an award-winning Naval Security Force protects service members in Bahrain, and a civilian contest winner gets up close and personal with Marine Corps training. We'll show you why this your heels are together. It's a fantasy come true. These stories and more on Navy Marine Corps News. This week on Navy Marine Corps News, the Navy welcomes its newest chief petty officers in ceremonies held around the fleet. Check out how an award-winning Naval Security Force protects service members in Bahrain. And a civilian contest winner gets up close and personal with Marine Corps training. We'll show you why this, right now, you will be at the position of attention, is a fantasy come true. These stories and more next on Navy Marine Corps News. Welcome to Navy Marine Corps News. I'm Chief Monica Hallman. And I'm Staff Sergeant Jimmy Williams. Many new ships are named in honor of sailors, Marines, or civilians who have distinguished themselves in battle or in service to our country. But Seaman Jennifer Smith tells us why the Secretary of the Navy recently named a ship in honor of an Army Master Sergeant who served in Vietnam. The Secretary of the Navy, Richard Danzig, honored Master Sergeant Roy Benavidez by naming a ship after him in a recent ceremony at the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. The USNS Benavidez is the latest in the class of roll-on, roll-off ships, which transport Army mechanized divisions. I like the idea of associating an Army uh, uh, non-commissioned officer with the Army service that this ship provides since it will transport uh, Army machinery and troops. The Vietnam War hero received the Medal of Honor for rescuing at least eight men from enemy attack, surviving several severe wounds sustained during his efforts. He's an example, I think, of qualities of courage and commitment that are embedded in our own code words of honor, courage, commitment. The ship's naming coincided with the beginning of Hispanic Heritage Month, which runs from September 15th through October 15th. Seaman Jennifer Smith, Navy Marine Corps News. Master Sergeant Benavidez died two years ago. The USNS Benavidez will be commissioned next spring. More than 5,000 sailors around the fleet have earned one of the most important titles in the Navy. Junior enlisted sailors and officers alike will turn to these new leaders for their knowledge and experience. Petty Officer Mike Gleckler tells us about the ceremony where sailors don the uniform and are now called chief. Ask the Chief is a household phrase in and out of the Navy. You are now the Chief. These words are part of the Chief Petty Officer's Creed, read worldwide at recent pinning ceremonies. New Chiefs receive their anchors in places such as Yokosuka, Japan, Sigonella, Sicily, on board USS Frederick in Pearl Harbor, and at Naval Station San Diego, as well as Norfolk. In the Washington, D.C. ceremony, Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Vern Clark addressed the new chiefs, praising their accomplishments. Our Navy needs leadership, and that's why you were selected. There were hundreds, thousands of people to choose from. You were chosen. While some would say the road to Chief Petty Officer begins on the day of selection, almost every chief will disagree. I think that spans from the, the time you step into the name as E1 up until you actually make e, so E chief rather and, and beyond. Passage to the rank of Chief Petty Officer is one of the Navy's most notable traditions. Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy Jim Hurt called on all chiefs to remember their commitment to the 100-year tradition of CPOs who have gone before them. It is my great honor today to read the Chief's Creed, not only for these new Chief Petty Officers coming into the mess, but to renew, regenerate, refocus every Chief Petty Officer in the audience today, just as it is being done throughout every place our Navy is today. Petty Officer Mike Leckler, Navy Marine Corps News. If you saw the latest Emmy Awards ceremony, did you wonder what it might be like to walk down that red carpet? Well, a sailor, Marine, airman, soldier, and Coast Guardsman got the chance to find out. 
As part of a salute to the military, a member of each of the armed services traveled to Hollywood and received star treatment. The five servicemen and women spent several days in L.A. touring the sites, including the Universal Studios theme park. Petty Officer First Class Tawana Galacero of Naval Air Station Whidbey Island and Marine Corporal Darrell Cook from Okinawa said the trip was a whirlwind of events. Oh, so far it's been great. We've done a lot of different events. We went to the uh, set of the West Wing and uh, we met Rob Lowe, so I was really excited. But the big excitement was hanging out on the red carpet with all those stars on Emmy Awards night. Many of the stars stopped by to give their best wishes to all the sailors and Marines around the world. Hi, troops! Hello, troops. All the best to you. Including Tony Award winner and former Marine Brian Dennehy. Just take care of yourself. Be careful. God bless you. We, uh, we all appreciate you very much. I myself spent a little time over there in Okinawa and a couple of other places. Well, there you go. All you folks in Okinawa have something in common with Brian Dennehy. Petty Officer Galacero and Corporal Cook earned that invitation by their outstanding performance. Recently, veterans and service members took time out to remember a significant event in U.S. history. Petty Officer Kelly Trout has the story from Pearl Harbor. On the anniversary of the end of World War II, service members, veterans, friends and family gathered aboard the battleship Missouri to remember the sacrifices made in a war that changed the course of history. The crowd came together to celebrate the heroes that fought for our American heritage, where 55 years ago the actual documents ending the war were signed. It's a great historic event to commemorate today, but it also the great thing that it commemorates is in honor of those who died and those who survived. Key speakers gave tribute to the veterans who laid the foundation of our present Navy Corps values. You are truly the unsung heroes of the home front, but your contribution was essential. And guests took the opportunity to relive history. This is um, the actual spot where World War II ended, so I mean, this is just a great honor just to be a part of history. I'm actually standing on the deck that the treaty was signed on. Although separated by time, both veterans and today's service members share a common bond. Recognizing the significance of the sacrifices of those who have gone before and the promise of the future. I think it's a real honor to be part of the ceremony today and be here on the ship where the surrender was signed and um, to see the faces of the veterans and to just imagine what they went through. And there's no doubt about it. If the United States was attacked today, I know how you people would feel exactly the way I did. I can't wait to get into it. Let's get this over with and let's show them what we can do. Today, thousands of people climb aboard Mighty Mo to relive the moments of Japan's unconditional surrender accepted by General MacArthur and the Allied forces at Tokyo Bay. Aboard Battleship Missouri, Petty Officer Kelly Trout, Navy Marine Corps News. If you have a creative mind and enjoy writing, you might want to check this out. The Navy's most prestigious annual essay contest is coming up. The Arleigh Burke Essay Contest is open to anyone, but the topic must relate to the mission of the U.S. Naval Institute. The top three winners will be awarded $3,000, $2,000, and $1,000, respectively. All entries must be postmarked by the 1st of December. For a complete list of rules, check out the Naval Institute's website at usni.com. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll meet the award-winning Naval Security Force Standing Guard in Bahrain. Stay right there. Hello, shipmates. Mick Von Hurt here. Last week, I told you about one of the changes in the enlisted advancement system. There's another big change that helps you hard-charging young petty officers. We have decided that early promote marks on a regularly scheduled evaluation should mean exactly that, give sailors a chance to promote early. NAV Admin 221 gave commanding officers the authority to waive up to one year of time and rate requirement for those E5s and E6s that receive an early promote recommendation. We know the number one quality of life concern for sailors is advancement opportunities. This change provides an opportunity for top performing sailors to compete early for E6 and E7. Even if they don't get advanced, they will still earn PNA points that will help for the next advancement cycle. This change also takes effect immediately. Good luck, and I'll see you about the fleet. Drunk 
drivers can be just as dangerous as wild animals. But not if they can't get their hands on the keys. Please designate a driver. Last week we told you about Cooperation of Float Readiness and Training, or CARAT 2000, an exercise that takes place throughout Southeast Asia every summer. It involves about 1,800 military forces, including U.S. Marines from the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force. And sailors from USS Reuben James, Sides, Mount Vernon, and Germantown. Air Force Sergeant Michael Brogan tells us about some of the sailors and Marines who took part in amphibious assault training. U.S. and Malaysian Navy ships patrolled the early morning seas as the amphibious landing force prepared to carry out its assault. For the moment, the beach north of Lamut, where the attack would take place, was empty. It wouldn't be that way for long. The initial attack will be carried out by amphibious assault vehicles loaded with U.S. Marine and Royal Malaysian Army forces. Their objective is to secure the beach. Once the beach is secured, the following forces will land and spread out inland. One Royal Malaysian Army Company and two U.S. Marine companies made up the landing force. The goal of the exercise is the, is the actual combined amphibious assault, is to become more familiar with each other. The Malaysians get a chance to train with us, and we get a chance to train with them, so that someday in a real-world situation, we're fighting next to each other, we'll know more about them and how they train us, and they'll know more about us. For some, taking part in this exercise offered some unique opportunities. We're in an actual jungle environment, something we don't get to see in the United States. And for these Marines, I mean, it's the first time they've ever got trained in a jungle, maybe the last time they've trained in a jungle, and someday they may be fighting a war in the jungle. So this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience for them. It's very valuable training that they need. The lessons learned from the assault should make it easier for these forces to work together the next time they meet. That next meeting will take place during Carrot 2001. Air Force Sergeant Michael Brogan. AFN News, Lamut, Malaysia. In addition to great training opportunities with Malaysian forces, sailors and Marines also participated in community service projects. That's right. They did everything from rebuilding schools to offering medical care to people who might not otherwise receive it. Good job. Naval Security Force Bahrain recently won the Department of Defense Worldwide Combat Terrorism Award for the Best Force Protection Institution. Sailors stationed there show us why they're the best in the military. Pastor Bragg, what's your third general order? Report all violations of orders I am struck to enforce. Well, I think in Bahrain it's, uh, it's unique because uh, this is a real world environment for terrorism. Terrorism is all around us. Because we're like the first line of defense. If, if we, we fail, then hey, the terrorists, whoever, they get what they want. Uh, as you know, in August, we usually operate in 130 to 140 plus degrees temperature. Um, so physical conditioning is paramount. The 12 hour days, uh, fully armed up, you know, they probably carry 30 something pounds on their backs for 12 hours. It wears them down. The sailors that I get are normally young, well trained, and aggressive. And most of them ask for this assignment because they want to go to the tip of the spear. Just meeting different people, being able to work with the public. So you have a good day. Thank you. You work with the public firsthand. You get to see everything firsthand. And it, it makes me feel good that I can always assist and help someone out. But every night when I drive out that gate and I see a young sailor uh, with an automatic weapon and a helmet on standing in 140 degree heat, I know that I got to give 110% to back them up. We remain a hard target. Well, they won't come to us. They'll go elsewhere. Because if they came here, they wouldn't get away with it. They don't want none of this. <laughs> Learning as much as you can about your enemy, like how many troops you're facing and in which direction they're headed, gives you an advantage on the battlefield. One way to get that information without placing Marines at risk is to send out a small remote control plane. Staff Sergeant Jared Dawes has more. Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center, based on Manned Aerial Vehicle Squadron 1, provides a specialized type of intelligence support to Marine Air Ground Task Force commanders real-time intelligence gathering with no risk to life or limb. VMU-1's unmanned Pioneer aircraft can fly for hours at thousands of feet, shooting high-resolution video the entire time. I just like being on flying, actually getting out and getting to do it and getting to see the results of it when we're downrange, actually seeing rounds impacting on target. On the runway, a flight crew prepares the aircraft much like they would a manned vehicle performing function checks, fueling, and conducting engine and electronic tests. The aircraft can be launched by a rolling takeoff, a jet-assisted takeoff, 
or more commonly by a catapult apparatus which launches the bird using highly pressurized air. Its remote control is in the hands of the external pilot located just next to the runway. This Marine has the critical job of controlling the 400-pound fiberglass aircraft safely into the air, performing function checks, then passing the control over to the internal pilot located in the ground control station. When I described my family members when I was going to the school, essentially what I tell them is just like a kid at the park flying his toy. That's what I'm being trained to do. VMU-1, like many of the Marine Corps specialized units, continues to enable Marines to win battles and come home alive. From 29 Palms, California, for Navy Marine Corps News, I'm Staff Sergeant Jared Dawes. Runners from around the country are gearing up for the annual Marine Corps Marathon. This year is even more special than usual for the People's Marathon. It's the 25th year Marines have held the event, and it's become the fifth largest marathon in the United States. The planning for such a large race takes place over a year in advance, which means next year's race is already in the works. In fact, organizers are looking for active and reserve Marines, sailors, and civilian Marines to enter a contest to design the poster for the 26th Marine Corps Marathon. If you'd like to enter, check out maradmin 446 00 But hurry up, the deadline is December 31st. When we return, we'll meet a man who won the chance of a lifetime and his dream come true. Stay with us. No matter what your question. How can I find the allowance parts list for this national stock number? Could anyone out there use an almost new surplus tractor? How can I get a copy of my birth certificate from a hospital in Manila? Where can I find an automatic bus transfer switch? Can you help me locate a point of contact for a UYQ-21? Can you please help me locate him? We connect you to information, support, services, experts, anytime. 1-877-41-TOUCH. The Navy Integrated Call Center, always within reach. Welcome back to Navy Marine Corps News. A few months ago, the Department of Defense and Yahoo Incorporated launched a contest allowing internet users to compete for a day in the life experience of one of the military services. Each contestant wrote an essay about a dream job in the military and each service chose one winner. The Marine Corps chose Richard Castanet of Richmond, Virginia. Castanet has a 17 year old son who is also interested. So the Marine Corps let both of them get an experience of a lifetime and I was there to share it with them. Every year, thousands of young men and women pass through the gate at Paris Island, South Carolina. They come here to earn the title Marine. Most of them leave three months later with many stories to tell their families and friends. But today, one man is here from Richmond, Virginia to live the life of a Marine for just a few days. I wonder what stories Richard Castanet will tell about his trip to where it all begins. You are now United States Marine Corps recruit training depot, Paris Island, South Carolina. Richard Castanet has been fascinated with the Marine Corps for many years. That's one thing I can't get at this point in my life, I'll be a Marine. I know I can't. So when his chance to be a Marine for a day came along, he jumped at it. I'd like to see how it really is, you know, and this, this may once and for all settle in my mind. Did I do the right thing or am I going to come back and go, ah, you know, could have been a Marine. Getting yelled at isn't fun, but this 47-year-old engineer knows it's part of the experience. I understand what will take place, so I, I think it will be, for me, enjoyable just to see what these other fellows get to live with. 
uh, I, I really am interested in my 17-year-old getting a, an idea of just what happens to people that, that show up. After getting an official welcome to the island, Castanet and his son began training. Shoot the arm out and double time down a bulkhead. Castanet felt the same nervousness recruits feel when they take their first leap of faith off the rappel tower. But I think my hand might have got a little warm back there because I, I did have something of a grip on it. With a little more confidence, Castanet and his son then headed for one of the crucible events. You can do anything you want to that dummy, good to go. Yes, sir! They listen to an instructor explain how to treat each enemy they find on the infiltration course. Smash him upside his head just like that, right? Yes, sir! With a dose of motivation, father and son were ready to hit the dirt with some hesitation. Get up, get down! Get down, 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 Following the crucible, recruits march nine miles from the field to the Iwo Jima statue at the parade deck. Here, recruits receive their first Marine Corps emblems. It's an emotional time for recruits because now, for the first time, they will be called Marines. When they raise the colors this morning, you will feel a feel of excitement you have never experienced before. Because now, it is up to you and your Marine team to ensure that old glory will fly. As a Private Ryan, you know, what did I do to deserve that? And uh, somebody else did it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have what I have because of what others have done. A lot of people look at me and say, God, look, he's crying. How can this be? <laughs> what is it? You can't know unless you've been here. You can't feel it. You can't sense it. So I got what I wanted and more. They literally did get more. After Paris Island, they traveled to Marine Corps Air Station New River and Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, where they received VIP treatment while they toured the bases and joined Marines training. And it looks like they really enjoyed their taste of what it takes to become a Marine. And the Marine Corps did a terrific job of making this experience very realistic. The program for a float college education, better known as PACE, gives sailors the chance to earn degrees while serving aboard ship. Petty Officer Katherine Anderson tells us how sailors aboard USS Nassau are making the most of the program. Even though the amphibious assault ship USS Nassau is underway, these sailors aren't missing class. That's because, along with their sea bags, they've also brought their own professors. It's part of the program for a float college education, or PACE. We brought the school to the sailors because we all understand what they're going through. Let's look at the blood. It's just a little bit of blood with such a large wound. And with the ability to fit classes around their work day, sailors find this program helpful. Because the professors are on the Navy's payroll, sailors pay for only their books. And right now I'm taking two classes from Pace and the books alone, just together the books cost $149. Now. The way I see it, I pay at a regular college $120 a semester hour, a credit hour, and that's a total savings, about $680 just for these two classes, and I get paid to do it. And by making it easy for sailors to get an education, the Navy is getting an excellent return on its investment in the form of retention. We have found in the past that people who get a college education, they're staying in the Navy longer and they're advancing faster. And when these sailors move on to their next duty station, they will be taking the benefits of their college degree with them. Aboard USS Nassau, Petty Officer Katherine Anderson, Navy Marine Corps News. If you'd like more information about PACE and other college opportunities, contact your educational services officer. And now, Health Beat. In this edition, Dr. Jennifer Berg talks about a sensitive but serious topic. I'm Commander Jennifer Berg. Welcome to Navy Health Beat. Today, we're going to talk about a subject that may be embarrassing for sailors and Marines, but could save your life. 
and that subject is sexually transmitted diseases known as STDs. Each year, more than 12 million people in the United States get an STD. Some STDs, like gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis, are curable if treated early. However, if they're left untreated, they can cause serious and permanent damage. For STDs like herpes and genital warts, there are no cures, and they can have chronic recurrences. Obviously, no one sets out to get an STD. So the question is, how do 12 million people become infected each year? The answer is, they aren't practicing sexual responsibility. The simplest and most effective form of responsibility is abstinence, the only sure way to avoid STDs. But for those of us who choose to be sexually active, practicing safe sex is mandatory. That means using a condom every time, unless you and your partner are in a long-term relationship with only each other and neither of you have an STD. So practice safe sex every time, even when you're with someone who seems nice. Nice people can get STDs too. And our yearly HIV test only checks for that one disease, not the many others out there. And remember, it's especially dangerous to engage in sexual activity while under the influence of alcohol. Because alcohol may impair your judgment and leave you regretting the night before. Your health care provider can give you more information about STDs. Remember, one sexual encounter isn't worth getting sick or even dying for. So be smart and take care of yourself. For Navy Health Beat, I'm Dr. Jennifer Berg. Well, that's the show for this week. As always, we'd like to hear your thoughts and ideas about Navy Marine Corps news. So call our feedback line or send us an email. The number and address are coming up in a minute, but hey, before we go, we'd like to say BZ to all of the Marines who went out of their way to make Richard Castanet's experience a memorable one. We'd also like to say hello and thanks for watching to our new viewers in Hartford, Wisconsin, who see us every week on the City of Hartford Cable Channel 11. We leave you this week with another look at Richard Castanet's trip to Paris Island. Until next week. Take care. And you've just taken your initial steps to becoming a part of the world's finest fighting force, the United States Marine Corps. Your clothes are rolled back, your head nod, a straight to the front, and most importantly, your mouth is shut. Even though the amphibious assault ship USS Nassau is underway, these sailors aren't missing class. That's because, along with their sea bags, they've also brought their own professors. It's part of the Program for a Float College Education, or PACE. We brought the school to the sailors because we all understand what they're going through. Let's look at the blood. It's just a little bit of blood with such a large wound. And with the ability to fit classes around their work day, sailors find this program helpful. Because the professors are on the Navy's payroll, sailors pay for only their books. And right now I'm taking two classes from Pace and 
the books alone, just together the books cost $149. Now, the way I see it, I pay at a regular college $120 a semester hour, a credit hour, and that's a total savings, about $680 just for these two classes. And I get paid to do it. And by making it easy for sailors to get an education, the Navy is getting an excellent return on its investment in the form of retention. We have found in the past that people who get a college education, they're staying in the Navy longer and they're advancing faster. And when these sailors move on to their next duty station, they will be taking the benefits of their college degree with them. Aboard USS Nassau, Petty Officer Katherine Anderson, Navy Marine Corps News. Vessel Brave, what's your third general order? Report all violations of orders I am instructed to enforce. Well, I think in Bahrain it's, uh, it's unique because uh, this is a real world environment for terrorism. Terrorism is all around us, so the threat is alive and the threat is well. Because we're like the first line of defense. If, if we, we fail, then hey, the terrorists, whoever, they get what they want. Conditions here are extremely harsh. Uh, as you know, in August, we usually operate in 130 to 140 plus degrees temperature. Um, so physical conditioning is paramount. The 12 hour days, uh, fully armed up, you know, they probably carry 30 something pounds on their backs for 12 hours. It wears them down. The sailors that I get are normally young, well trained, and aggressive. And most of them ask for this assignment because they want to go to the tip of the spear. Just meeting different people being able to work with the public. So you have a good day. Thank you. You work with the public firsthand. You get to see everything firsthand. And it, it makes me feel good that I can always assist and help someone out. But every night when I drive out that gate and I see a young sailor uh, with an automatic weapon and a helmet on standing in 140 degree heat, I know that I got to give 110% to back them up. We remain a hard target. Well, they won't come to us. They'll go elsewhere. Because if they came here, they wouldn't get away with it. They don't want none of this. I'm Commander Jennifer Berg. Welcome to Navy Health Beat. Today, we're going to talk about a subject that may be embarrassing for sailors and Marines, but could save your life. And that subject is sexually transmitted diseases known as STDs. Each year, more than 12 million people in the United States get an STD. Some STDs, like gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis, are curable if treated early. However, if they're left untreated, they can cause serious and permanent damage. For STDs like herpes and genital warts, there are no cures and they can have chronic recurrences. Obviously, no one sets out to get an STD. So the question is, how do 12 million people become infected each year? The answer is, they aren't practicing yeah, sexual merrier. responsibility. Yeah. The simplest and most effective form of responsibility is abstinence, the only sure way to avoid STDs. But for those of us who choose to be sexually active, practicing safe sex is mandatory. That means using a condom every time, unless you and your partner are in a long-term relationship with only each other and neither of you have an STD. So practice safe sex every time, even when you're with someone who seems nice. Nice people can get STDs too. And our yearly HIV test only checks for that one disease, not the many others out there. And remember, it's especially dangerous to engage in sexual activity while under the influence of alcohol, because alcohol may impair your judgment and leave you regretting the night before. Your health care provider can give you more information about STDs. Remember, one sexual encounter isn't worth getting sick or even dying for. 
So be smart and take care of yourself. For Navy Health Beat, I'm Dr. Jennifer Berg. On the anniversary of the end of World War II, service members, veterans, friends, and family gathered aboard the Battleship Missouri to remember the sacrifices made in a war that changed the course of history. The crowd came together to celebrate the heroes that fought for our American heritage, where 55 years ago the actual documents ending the war were signed. It's a historic event to commemorate today, but it also the great thing that it commemorates is in honor of those who died and those who survived. Key speakers gave tribute to the veterans who laid the foundation of our present Navy Corps values, and guests took the opportunity to relive history. This is um, the actual spot where World War II ended, so I mean, this is just a great honor just to be a part of history. I'm actually standing on the deck that the treaty was signed on. Although separated by time, both veterans and today's service members share a common bond. Recognizing the significance of the sacrifices of those who have gone before and the promise of the future. I think it's a real honor to be part of the ceremony today and be here on the ship where the surrender was signed and um, to see the faces of the veterans and to just imagine what they went through. There's no doubt about it. If the United States was attacked today, I know how you people would feel exactly the way I did. I can't wait to get into it. Let's get this over with and let's show them what we can do. Today, thousands of people climb aboard Mighty Mo to relive the moments of Japan's unconditional surrender, accepted by General MacArthur and the Allied forces at Tokyo Bay. Aboard Battleship Missouri, Petty Officer Kelly Trout, Navy Marine Corps News. The Secretary of the Navy, Richard Danzig, honored Master Sergeant Roy Benavidez by naming a ship after him in a recent ceremony at the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. The USNS Benavidez is the latest in the class of roll-on, roll-off ships, which transport Army mechanized divisions. I like the idea of associating an Army uh, uh, non-commissioned officer with the Army service that this ship provides since it will transport uh, Army machinery and troops. The Vietnam War hero received the Medal of Honor for rescuing at least eight men from enemy attack, surviving several severe wounds sustained during his efforts. He's an example, I think, of qualities of courage and commitment that are embedded in our own code words of honor, courage, commitment. The ship's naming coincided with the beginning of Hispanic Heritage Month, which runs from September 15th through October 15th. Seaman Jennifer Smith, Navy Marine Corps News. As part of a salute to the military, a member of each of the armed services traveled to Hollywood and received star treatment. The five servicemen and women spent several days in L.A. touring the sites, including the Universal Studios theme park. Petty Officer First Class Tawana Galicero of Naval Air Station Whidbey Island and Marine Corporal Darrell Cook from Okinawa said the trip was a whirlwind of events. Oh, so far it's been great. We've done a lot of different events. We went to the uh, set of the West Wing and uh, we met Rob Lowe, so I was really excited. But the big excitement was hanging out on the red carpet with all those stars on Emmy Awards night. Many of the stars stopped by to give their best wishes to all the sailors and Marines around the world. Hi, troops! Hello, troops. All the best to you. Including Tony Award winner and former Marine Brian Dennehy. Take care of yourself. Be careful. God bless you. We, uh... We all appreciate you very much. I myself spent a little time over there in Okinawa and a couple of other places.